Hey, I'm Pastor Rod. Thanks for joining us today. I hope this message makes a difference for you. One year at Christmas, everybody else got all these amazing gifts. I got a wooden desk game. Like a little wooden game to play at my desk. You know what I do at my desk? I actually work at my desk. If I want to play a game, I get up and go somewhere else. I don't sit at my desk and say, I think I want to play a game. I get bizarre golf gifts that I don't recognize and, and I would never use. I get clothes that don't fit. I've got everything from an extra small to an extra large. I was honored by the extra large. Thank you very much. One time I got a gift, no explanation, just a bag of dried black-eyed peas. Okay, I don't like peas. Green peas, black-eyed peas, whatever peas. I don't like peas, ever. I'm never going to eat them. Don't give me peas. I have it in my office. I, for, I meant to bring it with me. I'll bring it up with me tomorrow. I, one year, I got a signed photo of Pastor Parker and Aaron Stone. Well, that's a precious gift. But I don't just get bad gifts. I take great joy in giving bad gifts. In retaliation, I love to buy random odd gifts for our team. The weirdest thing Pastor Rod's gotten me as a gift? Funny you should ask. I'm wearing them today. The weirdest, strangest, oddest gift I've ever gotten from my husband, Pastor Rod? Oh, I have it in a special place. J just a second. thing Pastor Rod's ever given me? Glad you asked. This is Carl. I don't even know. He's a giant statue of a head with some holes in it that weighs 150 pounds and was just in my office. I don't know if it's strange, but he got me this hat. I, I kind of like it. <laughs> the weirdest gift Pastor Rod has ever given me is this cat outfit with a matching hat. But that's not even the weirdest part. Maddie! He got us the same thing, and he expects us to wear these things on stage. Oh, you want to see the strangest gift Pastor Rod's ever given me? Just wait right here. I can't help it. I just find things, and it just, it, when I see it, it just looks like them. And so I just know they'd love it. I was in a shoe store yesterday. There was a sign that said, due to COVID-19, we are no longer doing shoe fittings. <laughs> well, that's all you have is shoes. I mean, you mean to say I can't try on shoes before I buy them? Can you imagine how many exchanges that store must get if they sell anything? I annually, annually contribute to one of the biggest shopping days of the year, the day after Christmas, when everybody takes the gifts they don't like back to the store. If it's useless, the wrong size, the wrong color, if you already have it, if you can't figure out what it is, no problem. You take it back and you get the right size or the right color or you get something you like. On December 26th, you exchange the bad thing you have and don't want for a good thing you don't have and really want. I want to look with you today at a different kind of exchange. 
Jesus gives you a chance to exchange something you struggle with for something only he can give. It's an amazing offer and a powerful promise. Before I get to what Jesus gives, let me talk to you a few minutes about what you exchange. I, I enjoy talking about areas that are my strengths, where I'm modeling good habits and behavior and I can share principles. Weaknesses aren't as fun to talk about. But I suspect many of you struggle with this same thing. I have a tendency to work too long, schedule too full, and to commit to way too much. I don't do well at things like taking, off, taking days off and resting. Now, I'm not looking for sympathy. In fact, I don't deserve sympathy for an out of balance life. I have a lot of good excuses. Well, we've got a big church, that's just what it takes. Or, I don't wanna be the slow down and make everyone wait on me. I say, well, I've always been this way. Like somehow always being this way is a good reason to keep being this way or I can do anything for a while. I'm famous for that statement that I've been making for over 19 years as pastor. I'm not looking for sympathy, I'm also not looking for lectures. I've given myself plenty of lectures. Several of my close friends have talked to me about adjusting my pace. Our board has challenged me to change. Our leadership team has made their opinions clear. I'm not arguing with them, they're right. I, I need to make some adjustments. And I've asked them to hold me accountable so I absolutely will make the necessary changes. Now you probably haven't noticed because I still look so young. <laughs> Thank you. A little slow on that applause. Apparently all the pickle givers are in this room. I, I've aged a, a little bit in 19 years. Here's what I looked like when I started this journey as your pastor. Okay, not really. This is what I looked like when I started. Still a pretty big difference, isn't it? Thank you, Daryl. I want you to know I'm not talking to you as an amazing expert, but a fellow struggler who recognizes the challenge and is committed to change. Now, before you write an email correcting me, I, I want you first to evaluate yourself. Are you tired and worn out? Maybe it's more than just today. You are pushing yourself to the breaking point. I already just saw somebody nudge her spouse. Maybe like me, you've got a lot of good reasons. Well, I have to. This is what it takes. I don't have a choice. If I don't do it, who will? I've always been this way. I'll survive. Regardless of your reasons or excuses, you're exhausted and weary. Is that you? Are you pushing yourself too hard for too long? Now, I understand that can be a loaded question. If you admit you're worn out, am I going to lecture you about getting the right amount of sleep the night before you come to church so you can give your best to God? Am I going to watch more closely to make sure you don't fall asleep while I'm speaking? No, no tricks. I just want you to be honest with me and honest with yourself. Are you deep down tired and exhausted? Tuesday, July 14th, I came to the sanctuary and I recorded a message designed for pastors. It was 15 pressures pastors are facing, 15 ways to manage and cope, Five ways for people to help and pray for their pastor. By Friday of that week, the video had been watched more than 80,000 times. It's now been watched over 145,000 times. And on the video, I said, if you're struggling, email me. Pastor, if you're struggling, email me and include your phone number. If you need to talk, I'm not too busy to talk. I get emails and calls and messages and texts from all over the country and literally all over the world, every continent but Antarctica where apparently they're not having a COVID issue. Everyone pastors saying you spoke to me. I'm worn out and weary. I'm discouraged 
I just want to give up and quit. This has been the most difficult year in history for pastors. The pressures of coronavirus, racial tension, economic strain, and offended people has them at a breaking point. They feel like whatever they do is wrong. I've heard some crazy stories. One pastor asked someone in the church who had symptoms and is waiting for results from a COVID test to take the week off church to protect others. The person got angry and said, that's it. I am never coming back to your church. Pastors are breaking under the strain. They're quitting the church and leaving the ministry. They just can't take it anymore. Now, you may not be a pastor, but I've heard from many of you, many people who say, Pastor Rod, I'm tired. I'm worn out. I don't know why, but I've got no energy. I've got no strength. I feel like just giving up. The pressure, the stress, all the changes, all the fear, the ever constant change has you worried and worn out. The Bible word for that is weary. The dictionary definition of weary is physically or mentally exhausted by hard work, exertion, strain, fatigued, tired. Does that describe you? Now, sometimes it's your fault. You go too fast, too far, and you don't take care of yourself. You try to do more than you should or can. You refuse to allow anyone to help you. You call that independence, but it's really just stubborn pride. You don't take care of yourself. You're not getting uh, the right amount of sleep. You're not eating right. Other times, it seems like there's nothing you can do about it. Maybe you're caring for an aging parent who's sick. Or you're a single mom balancing school, work, kids, and COVID. Maybe you don't have the time or the money to take a real break. You might be facing physical challenges, sickness, or disease. Perhaps your business is short of employees, or your kid is sick. Adding that to your already busy life has you missing sleep and feeling stressed. You have to work overtime or a a second job to make ends meet. Every area in your life has stress. Marriage, family, work, school. You're worn out and exhausted with no end in sight. You're headed for a crash. It's inevitable. Exhaustion leads to physical problems. Your body and immune system or weakened by your schedule and stress, a good, good indication you're going too fast, too far for too long, is when you have just unusual symptoms that you have no explanation for. Exhaustion leads to relational problems. You're, you're more impatient. You say things and you react to people in a different way than usual, and, and you're even aware of that. There's more tension in your marriage, in your family. Your performance at work or at school suffers because of your tired, weakened condition. It affects your grades. It affects your work. Not only are you in danger of a physical collapse, exhaustion is dangerous for your spiritual condition. I've shared this acronym with you before. You are more vulnerable to sin and temptation when you are hungry, angry, Lonely or tired, halt. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. When you're weary and when your defenses are weakened, it's dangerous. Now, I want to pause and tell you, listen to me, look at me. Being weary and run down is not a sin. It is not a sin to be tired. It can happen to anyone at any age. Parents, grandparents, Single adults, students, even kids find themselves on empty at the end of their strength. So what do you do? Is there an answer? Is there hope? Jesus knew what you would face. 
He understood weariness and fatigue, so he offered a way out, a beautiful promise found in Matthew chapter 11. Listen to the words of Jesus who said, come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. See, now, that's a phrase you don't hear very often, if ever in today's world, take my yoke or yoke. In order to really understand that promise, we've got to figure out what it means. A yoke connected to oxen. When two oxen were yoked together, it required both animals to work together at the same speed and strength. They had to keep up with each other. The animal had no choice. The yoke was on them. The whip was cracked, and the difficult work was done. Throughout Scripture, the idea of being yoked to something was not a good thing. Being yoked speaks of subjection and slavery. It's working long and hard because you're forced to. You don't have a choice. Yoking yourself to Jesus is the opposite. It doesn't result in hard work because his yoke is gentle and easy and light. Jesus said, come to me. Place yourself in the yoke. Choose to join to me. Connect yourself to me. I won't place unnecessary burdens on you. I won't be mean or cruel. When you get here alongside me, I will do the pulling for you. My yoke is easy. And my burden is light. When you yoke yourself to Jesus, you move at his speed instead of your own. He does the striving. He does the pulling. He does the hard work. It's arriving on time, his time, not ahead of him or behind him, but beside him. There was another meaning to yoke. In Bible days, when a young Hebrew boy was educated and at least 14 years old, if he desired to continue education and become a rabbi, he first had to find a rabbi who was willing to teach him. In order to prove his worth as a follower, the would-be student was gruelingly tested in his knowledge of the Torah and other books of the law. He was put through difficult debates to prove his ability to speak and to argue and to reason under pressure. If he passed all the tests, and it looked like he would make a good rabbi, then he would hear these words. Take my yoke upon you, which would mean he was accepted. Every young man longed to hear those words. He would then be totally committed, devoted to learning and becoming like the rabbi. And Jesus says, you don't have to do a bunch of work. You don't have to prove yourself. You pass the test. Come to me. You're accepted and selected. Take my yoke upon you. We're in this together. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Jesus made that offer not just to the best and the brightest or to the privileged few, but to all, everyone who is weary or burdened. Jesus said, if you're beat down and weary, if you're chewed up and have nothing left, come to me, join me, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let's look back at the definition of weary. Physically or mentally exhausted 
by hard work, exertion, or strain, fatigued, tired. The dictionary definition of rest is the refreshing quiet or repose of sleep, refreshing ease or inactivity after exertion or labor, relief or freedom, especially from anything that wearies, troubles, or disturbs, a period or interval of inactivity, repose, solitude, or tranquility. In the original language, the word used here for rest meant in deep peace. I've got a question for you. How would you like deep peace? And I want to take those definitions and I want to put everything we've learned into the verse and we're going to make our own personal in our language version of the promise. Are you ready? Come to me, all who are physically or mentally exhausted by hard work, exertion, or strain. Come to me, all of you who are fatigued or tired or stressed. Every one of you, each of you, you are all welcome with me. You don't have to be smart or special or elite. I accept you. Connect yourself to me. Walk with me and I will give you refreshing quiet and ease. I will give you relief and freedom, especially from anything that worries, troubles, or disturbs you. I will give you solitude and tranquility. I will give you a deep peace. Become my servant and learn from me. Walk with me day by day. I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke, it's easy. And my burden is light. Doesn't that sound amazing? You can trade weariness for rest and weakness for strength. Several years ago, after a long, hard week, I fell into bed uh, desperately needing rest and sleep. And I, I had a dream that so impressed me, I, I wrote it down. I still remember it vividly. In my dream, our choir was singing a song that's not really a typical choir song. And they, they were just on the chorus singing, his strength is perfect when our strength is gone. He'll carry us when we can carry on. And as they sang, the presence of Jesus filled this room. And on their own, people started walking to the front and kneeling down, tears streaming down their faces, giving their weakness to God and receiving his strength. And in my dream, I watched for a moment from my seat on the front row and then I walked to the front and I laid on the floor face down and began to weep. And there was an unbelievable sense of rest and peace in his presence. I woke up with tears running down my face, knowing that I'd been in the presence of God. And I sensed God reminding me and I sense God speaking this to you today. When you come near the end of your strength, you're nowhere near the end of mine because my strength never ends. So give me your weakness and your weariness. Come to me with your tiredness and fatigue. I'll replace it with a strength that is way beyond your own because in your weakness, I am strong. When the apostle Paul was exhausted and weary, he heard from God. We studied this promise May 17. Paul wrote, he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. 
And Paul said something real, really unusual. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness and in insults and in hardship and persecution and difficulties. And it finishes with this statement, for when I am weak, then I'm strong. When you pretend to be strong, when you say, I got it, I can handle this, I can do it, I don't need a break, I'm good. You operate in your own strength. When you acknowledge your weakness, that's an opportunity for the strength of God to fill you. It's when you're weak. It's when you admit that you're tired and need his strength. That's when you become strong. Jesus said, come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find Rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. If you're weary and burdened, take it to Jesus. Admit you're tired. Acknowledge your weakness. Don't fake it because he already knows anyway. It makes no sense to be fake with Jesus. Be honest. And know that Jesus has a place for you. He accepts you as his follower, even with all your weaknesses. Take his yoke upon you. Learn from him. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, if you're not yoked or connected to him, then you can't know the peace and the rest that only he can give. And today, I just encourage you, connect yourself to Jesus. Connect yourself to him. You say, well, I don't know if I qualify. No, no, no. Jesus said, all who are weary and burdened, come to me. So what does that look like? That coming to me, it's not just, an, it's not just kind of a passive sit here and hope. It's changed the way you approach life. It's ad adapt his way and his rhythm. Connect yourself to Jesus. Take his yoke upon you. Learn his pace and experience his grace. How does that happen? The only way a student could learn from the rabbi was to listen to his voice, to do life with him, to spend time with him. The only way that you can ever learn to live and walk at Jesus' pace and in his strength is to spend time with him, to listen for his voice, and he's calling you. He's calling out to you if you've been pushing and you're weary, and it's time to exchange that for rest. Hear the voice of Jesus today through my weird words. Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. See, if you're not connected to Jesus, people have lied to you and they've told you it's a bunch of rules and it makes life more difficult. And it's just, no, Jesus has come and I'll give you rest.